19.6 free energy and temperature. We're going to be using the delta G equals delta H minus T delta S uh, equation quite a bit today. Uh, and we'll be talking about how the delta G value uh, is related to the temperature in the reaction. So our objectives, we're going to see how delta G changes with temperature, and then we're going to be able to find delta G at any given temperature when we know delta H and delta S. So we talked in the last section a little bit about uh, what standard energy to formation are. Remember that when uh, you do have them in their elemental form, they are zero. Uh, you can use them just like delta H of formation and the standard molar entropies to get the uh, free energy change for the reaction. Okay, but as we know, many times reactions don't occur right at 25 degrees Celsius. If they're not at 25 degrees Celsius, then that delta G of formation does not work. Uh, that delta G of formation with that standard degree sign up there uh, signifies that it must be at 25 degrees Celsius. And so certainly we have to be able to look at it at different, uh, using different temperatures. So as we know, we can use this equation here where delta G, again, not standard, uh, is equal to delta H minus T delta S, where the temperature certainly can vary uh, quite a bit. We know that delta H is enthalpy. Uh, delta S is the entropy. Now, because this value, negative T delta S, depends directly on the absolute temperature, then certainly the free energy change is going to vary when the temperature changes. We know that delta H can be a positive value or a negative value. Um, if it's a positive value, that does not lead, that does not necessarily need, lead, lead to spontaneity, but we know that the negative T delta S also plays a factor. Okay. The temperature, on the other hand, must be a positive number. It cannot be a negative. So when delta S is positive, what happens is this whole negative T delta S section here is negative because of that negative sign. Okay. When delta S is negative, then you've got this negative, and you have the negative of the, of the change in the entropy, and so this whole thing becomes positive. And that will certainly affect whether the reaction becomes more spontaneous or less spontaneous. So basically, the two things that affect whether delta G is going to be positive or negative are the value for delta H and then what our total is after combining the temperature with our entropy change and taking into account that subtract sign or that negative sign. <clears throat> now, let's say both of them are negative. Um, yeah, uh, and when I say when when both of them are negative, what I what I mean uh, is that delta H, if if we look at the equation, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. If delta H is negative, that's exothermic. If delta S will always be negative in the pressure at all temperatures when both are negative. Um, I think what I mean by that is if this whole quantity is negative and this whole quantity is negative, which basically means that delta S has to be positive, for negative T delta S to be negative, delta S must be positive. So if both quantities are negative, then certainly delta G will also be negative. If delta H is positive, and delta S is negative, thereby, thereby making this whole thing positive. So if both of these are positive, then delta G also must be positive, and it will not be spontaneous in the forward direction at all. But when you have opposing signs, and that's where uh, it will, that will certainly have a greater effect on delta G. If this one is positive and this whole thing is negative, that's when it depends on the magnitude of this and the magnitude of this and the temperature to determine whether it's going to be spontaneous or non-spontaneous. And temperature certainly can uh, play a big factor in that. So, and we do know that delta H and delta S do change a little bit with temperature, but not enough to make a difference. The value of the temperature itself going from 298 Kelvin to 250 Kelvin can have a much bigger difference uh, than the very slight change that you see uh, when the temperature changes with delta H and delta S. <clears throat>
Okay, so if we look at water, when water melts, it's going from the solid state to the liquid state. Okay, looking at that, we should be able, if the atmosphere is one pressure, or the pressure is one atmosphere, if, it's, uh, if you're going from a solid to a liquid, for it to go from a solid to a liquid, is it endothermic or exothermic? And then does the entropy increase or decrease? For it to go from a solid to a liquid, it's not going to release heat. It must absorb heat. Just like boiling is an endothermic process, anytime you go from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas, it's going to be an endothermic process. So it's endothermic, and does the entropy increase or decrease? Well, you're going from a solid state to a liquid state, so you're increasing the randomness. So you're def you would definitely say that the entropy increases. It's becoming more random. So in both cases, delta H is positive and delta S is positive. Okay, if delta S is positive, then the quantity negative T delta S overall is going to be, has to be negative. Okay, because the temperature we know has to be positive. Uh, and so the positive here, the positive here, plus the negative sign makes the whole thing negative. But we know that if temperature is less than 0 degrees Celsius, so it's less than 273, then the magnitude of delta H, so again, if we look at that equation, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. If it's below 0 degrees Celsius, then the enthalpy part of it plays a bigger role. Um, in it not being spontaneous. So delta H at z less than zero is greater than the negative T delta S, and since it's positive, delta G must also be a positive value. Okay? Now, if the temperature is greater than zero, then the negative T delta S is going to be greater than the magnitude of delta H, so your negative T delta S part is going to be bigger which means you're going to be subtracting, you're going to take a smaller number and you're going to subtract a bigger number, which will give you your negative value for delta G. So here's a good example of where the delta H and the delta S don't change, but as the temperature changes, the value for delta G does change. Below zero, it's a uh, positive delta G, and so therefore it is not spontaneous in the forward direction. Uh, above zero degrees Celsius, so above 273, it is spontaneous because it's a ne it'll give you a negative value. So here are just some different ways you can look at it. When delta H is negative, which is exothermic, and it leads to more disorder, that's is always, delta G will always be negative. Uh, because you're, it's exothermic, it's releasing heat. Delta S is positive, it's becoming more random. Both of those things alone lead to spontaneity. And together it makes it very spontaneous. If it's the opposite, if it's endothermic, and it becomes more ordered, then there's no way it could be spontaneous in the forward direction. That's always positive at any temperature. Okay, but we do know that the reverse reaction is always spontaneous. Okay, and then if they're both negative, which again gives the positive for negative T delta S, then it depends on the temperature. The temperature will determine whether it's spontaneous or not. Same thing, if they're both positive, it makes negative T, makes T delta S negative. So again, it depends on the temperature. So when the signs of delta H and delta S are negative, or are opposite of each other, then we know right away that it's either always going to be positive or always going to be negative. Uh, but when they're the same, then, we, then it does depend on the temperature. And then you just, it's, it's really it's just as easy as putting the numbers in the equation and figuring out what it is. Okay, <clears throat> so we know that under standard conditions we have this equation delta G equals delta H uh, minus T delta S. We know that when we're under standard conditions though, uh, that it can also be the same thing. If we know the standard uh, enthalpy change and the standard entropy change, we can find the standard uh, molar or standard free energy change where the temperature uh, must be the 298. Okay, and again, they would either have to give you on that exam or you'd have to calculate it using the information from the book and you could find delta G standard. Okay, now again, we have to assume that delta H, delta S don't change much in temperature. If we're given this reaction right here, we should be able to look up the values for uh, nitrogen, and hydrogen, and ammonia in the back of the book and then be able to determine uh, whether that is uh, a, a uh, spontaneous in the forward direction uh, reaction. Okay, now right away without even doing that, uh, we should be able to uh, predict a little bit about this. Okay, uh, 
Um, predict the, react the direction in which delta G changes for the following reaction with increasing temperature. So as the temperature increases, uh, what happens? Okay, we can see that we're going from four moles of gas on the left-hand side to two moles of gas on the right-hand side. Therefore, it's becoming more ordered. We would expect the entropy to decrease, so we know that we have a negative delta S there. Okay, if delta S is negative, we know that this whole thing here is positive. And so if the temperature goes up, which is what's happening with, with increasing temperature, as the temperature goes up, this whole thing is going to become more positive. As it becomes more positive, um, therefore, the delta G uh, will also become more positive. Okay? More positive also means the same thing as less negative, depending on whether. If it was negative in the first place, it becomes less negative. But if it's already positive, it becomes more positive. They kind of are synonymous with each other. Okay? So when you increase the temperature, it actually slows down that reaction. It causes it to be less spontaneous in the forward direction. Okay, using that same equation where nitrogen and hydrogen react to produce ammonia, we should be able to, to actually calculate the values of delta G at two different temperatures. So first we can find delta H and delta S uh, using, those, using those values, put them into our equation. And at 25 degrees Celsius, delta H equals negative 92.38. There's our 25 degrees Celsius in Kelvin. Again, look at the units here. We've got kilojoules. Here we've got, again, entropy is usually written uh, in joules. That's a nice arrow, huh? Uh, and so you've got to either change those joules to kilojoules or change these kilojoules to joules. So at 25 degrees Celsius, delta G is negative 33.3. Again, using the same numbers except for increasing the temperature, we find that delta G is positive 61. So at 25 degrees Celsius, it is spontaneous in the forward direction. At uh, 500 degrees Celsius, it is certainly not spontaneous in the forward direction. Okay, uh, we can do the same thing here where we have a different reaction where, where we can calculate delta H standard and delta S standard at 298, and then we can use those values to calculate delta G. If you'd like to try those out, great. Uh, again, just using the enthalpies of formation, the standard molar entropies. Uh, and then using the delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Okay, so we know that delta H, delta S don't vary much with temperature. You can use the same values at different temperatures. Uh, so we know that delta G is greatly changed mainly by the change in temperatures. Um, and when negative delta T, negative T delta S uh, is greater, it has a bigger effect on the spontaneity of the reaction. Uh, just uh, four review questions to do. And uh, we'll talk about them tomorrow in class.